Bonjour, good morning. J'espère que tu vas bien aujourd'hui. Comment ça va? So, today we are having our, let me call it lesson six. Huh? Though we know it's actually five because lesson four went to the cut. So, last week, Bonjour, Nyambura. Bonjour, madame. Comment ça va? Ça va bien. Mm. So, tell me, last week, what did we learn? Last week, we looked at indefinite verbs. Indefinite? Yes. We were looking at we, uh, hmm, irregular verbs. Which verbs were this way really we looked at? Pardon? Which one? Give me an example. I can't hear. Well, give me an example of a verb we looked at last week. Uh, we looked at <clears throat> verb to speak. Mm -hmm. Which is? Pala. Pale, pale. Mm -hmm. Pale, which means to speak. Mm -hmm. Yes. Continue. And then, what did we do? The verb pale means to speak. We learned about writing it in the present tense. So, what did I say you're supposed to do when you want to write a verb in the present tense? Mm -hmm. We looked about the grouping, mm -hmm. the categories of grouping. Mm -hmm. The first one, add with er. Mm -hmm. The second one, we said it ends with ir. Mm -hmm. And the third one we say it add with, add with R E. Mm -hmm. And then we concentrated on the group one verbs. Those ones ending with with E R. How do we write the verbs ending with ER in the present tense? What are we supposed to do? Nyambura umenda, Avi. About the conjugation. Yes. When you're ending with ER, you want to conjugate it in the present tense. What did we say we do? Mm -hmm. Step one, step. Step what do we do? Step two, what do we do? Oh, step one. Mm. You remove the adding. Which is? Which is ER. Mm -hmm. Then step two, mm -hmm. you add. Mm -hmm. What are we adding? Mm -hmm. What do we add? <laughs> we add. <laughs> we add e. Where? Where we have removed the e uh, the ending. <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure about. Yeah, but remember when you are with verbs we what did we have before you write the verb you had what before verb we had before you write the verb what must you have Mm -hmm. 
when we did the, the naming words you remember when we looked at the naming words the naming words when we did the nouns eh Mm -hmm. you that all nouns have gender and number and so there was a word you had to write before you write the noun which we called the article that article it tells you whether the noun is masculine singular feminine singular masculine plural or feminine plural right yeah so now we started learning the verbs the Action words and we learned last semester we learned etra, avoir, and ali. So I am asking, what words did we have before we wrote the conjugation of etra, avoir, and ali? I must have what? Oh. I must have. What do you call them? Mm -hmm. Tell me an example if you can Tell me an example. Like J, mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. L, L, mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. v, mm -hmm. then L, L, Fourier. Yes, so we call those ones the subject pronouns, the subject, the person who is doing the action, all right? Yeah. So Back to what we did last week, you're telling me we are adding E. So for which subject are you going to add E? For the J subjects. Mm -hmm. You add E. And the next one? The next one we, we add ES. And who is okay. that next one? Two, 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 two yeah. Okay. Continue. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Continue, continue. Then il 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 l l singular mm -hmm. we add e mm -hmm. we add then no we add o and s mm -hmm. v we add e z mm -hmm. then il l we add e n t exactly so when you see those endings when you meet a verb ending with es when it is ending with ons ending with ez because of that you should be able to tell who the subject is right yeah did we look at how to write in the negative when you make it you're not doing something did we look at that yes we did okay and so then i i can move to today's topic so kindly if you could just take some notes and then i shall ask you one or two questions after i'm done yeah, yeah. Okay. so you can mute yeah and so today we are going to look at uh, the formation of questions la formation des questions la formation des questions how we form questions and to look at this i shall just give a simple sentence i think now we have learned uh, uh how to work with verbs how to work with nouns and so a simple sentence is usually just made up of the subject you have a subject of course followed by a verb and then you can finish it off with a noun all right and so i'm going to use the verb we used to illustrate how to conjugate in the present tense last week i'll use the verb parler and so my sentence which i'm going to use to illustrate la formation de questions shall be vous parlez Vous, of course, V O U S. Parler, we know, is P A R L. Of course, it will end with E Z because the subject must agree with the verb. So it will end with E Z. So, vous parlez le français. Le français is the word for French. So, my sentence is Vous parlez. Le français, that you speak 
French. That is the sentence we are going to use to illustrate how to form questions. So there are three ways. There are three ways of forming questions in French. We have three ways, three different ways. When I want to form a question, I can either use A, B, or C. So I'll go to the first one. The first way of forming a question is by placing this statement, esque, esque. When I place esque in front of that sentence we are using, I have formed a question. So how do I write esque? Esque is the word etra for ill, that E-S-T. So a E S T and hyphen C E and then the word K K is Q U E. So S K is made up of three words A E S T C E and then K Q U E S K. So my sentence, I started by saying, vous parlez le français. So the first way of forming a sentence using esque, I will say, esque vous parlez le français? Do you speak French? Esque vous parlez le français? Do you speak French? Once you put esque, in front of a sentence or a statement, it becomes a question automatically. Esca. I go to the second way of forming questions. The second way of forming a question is using the method which we call inversion. Inversion. So can someone tell me when you hear the word inversion, what comes to your mind? Someone? When you hear inversion, what comes to your mind? Can somebody speak? So when you talk about inversion, inversion has to do with like, you're turning upside down. Eh? But now when it comes, Catherine, Niambie, inversion. When you hear the word inversion, what do you think it means? I, I don't know. But if you take a guess. Maybe you start by, by the word and then you add with a question. Starting with which word? Your verb. Uh, you're almost there, but uh, you're not uh, okay. If I start with a verb, and then what will I do? I don't know. Okay, you're 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 somehow right, but just that you're not completing it. When we talk about inversion, I have said when you're when you're told like you're in what in inversion, you're actually like changing, eh? Right? You have inverted inversion. And so when we talk about using inversion as a method to form a sentence, remember when we learn when we learned about working with verbs, to Lisema, you must start with the subject and then it is followed by the verb. You start with the subject, followed by the verb. And we saw the subject is, you say, je suis, or je parle. 
you must start with the subject and then you write your verb. You must start with the subject and then you write your verb. And so now when we talk about inversion, I am changing the order. Catherine, you're writing saying that we start with the verb, but now we say you start with the verb plus the subject. You start with the verb, then you write your subject in that order now. You have inverted. Instead of saying, vous parlez le français. So when I use inversion, what happens? The original, our original sentence is, vous parlez le français. So when I use inversion, what do I end up with? Having said that, Somebody say something. Oh. Exactly. We use inversion. Now, instead of saying vous parlez, I say parlez-vous. But now what you need to note is that when you use inversion, you use a hyphen. A hyphen, sinyako ka line, kadogo hako. That ka small line. So now you use a hyphen between the verb and the subject. Once you see a hyphen between a verb and a subject, number one, you know it is a question. Number two, inversion has been used. So the minute you use inversion, you're supposed to insert that hyphen between the verb and the subject. Because number one, remember, you have changed the order of things. Instead of the normal subject verb, you're doing verb subject for you now to make it a question. So in addition to changing the order, you also insert a hyphen. A hyphen tells you that the order of subject verb has been interfered with. So of course, when you remove that hyphen now, you take it back to the original subject verb. So the second way of forming a question is now using what we have just called inversion. Inversion, you're changing the subject verb into verb subject. And once you do that, you insert a hyphen and then of course you can put a question mark at the end of what you've written. I go to the third way of forming questions. The third way of forming questions is by using what we call intonation intonation i n t o n a t i o n intonation intonation tell me when you hear that word intonation what word can you get out of it ukiangalia to how it is written which verb can you see which word are you seeing there which English word are you seeing? That word intonation, for you to end up with the, the word intonation, where are you coming from? Tone. So from the word tone, you get intonation. So when I say intonation, I'm talking about the tone you're using. Which tone are you using? Now, when you want to, when you want to, 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 to write that question. Our original statement is, vous parlez le français. So if I use intonation, I'll say, vous parlez le français? Vous parlez le français from my tone, you're able to tell whether am I saying a statement or is it a question I am asking, okay? So uh, I want you to form a simple sentence. I used 
vous parlez le français. I want you to form your own simple questions and then a simple sentence, just one sentence. And then that one sentence, I want you to form the question in three different ways. So I'm just giving you like five minutes and then I come back here to hear what you have to say. You give me examples of uh, your sentence and then now you put the same sentence into questions using what we have just learned, okay? So in five minutes, I'm coming back. Can I hear you, Hope? Yambura? What have you come up with? Did you form your sentence? Which I have said, you, you're simply using subject verb, and then you finish it off with a noun. And then now you can form questions using the same. Can I hear, please? Now I'm going there. Unmute and speak kindly. Hope si just kia sauti yako, hebu ongea kidogo. Nobody is saying anything, surely. Yes, Catherine. For, for the first, first way to change the form. Which is your sentence? Let's start from there. My sentence is, you live in Loiru. Read it in French. Whose habitats are loyal? Mm -hmm. Now form this question. Uh -huh. The first way? The first way I didn't get it. I, I was busy trying to connect my mic, but I got the second and the third one. Let me hear the second and the third, and then I'll give you the first one. So when I use the second one, mm -hmm. I, I'm using the infusion. Mm -hmm. So I, I say habit habitus was a royal. Mm-hmm. All right. The third one. The third one is the one I'm supposed to like use intonation whereby I'm supposed to, to ask like the like it's a question. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm going to say both habitats are rural. Yes, very good. So the first one I said is when you place ESC. ESC is written E S T. So you're using E S T and then you put a hyphen. Then C E and then the next word is Q U E. You say ESC E S T hyphen C E and then Q U E. You say ESC. So now form your question using ESC. What will you say? So I'm supposed to say ESC habitat pose a riddle. When you do that, you're using two methods in one. No, no, natumia mbili. Umetumia eska na tena umetumia inversion. You don't use two methods together. You can only use one at a time. I'm saying you put eska in front of your statement, the original statement, the original statement. You're putting eska in front of it. So what will you end up with? So I'm going to say S whose habitats are rural. Yes, S whose habitats are rural. Yes, those are the three ways we use to form questions. Kuna mtu mwingine ata nipatia zake. Nani mwingine ata ongea? Somebody else? Hope ni mekwambia sija kusikia. Si useme kitu. Hakuna. Okay, so I am going to use uh, Catherine's example to illustrate how to answer questions there are two ways you can answer a question you can answer a question with the affirmative you're accepting you know you're giving like a positive you're affirming that is what we call like the positive you would say yes that is the affirmative and the second way of answering questions is in the negative. In the negative, you're saying no, right? So there are two ways. We have seen three ways of forming questions, and now we are going to see two ways of answering the same questions. So when I answer a question with yes, I am accepting, I am agreeing. When I answer a question with no, I am I am disagreeing, right? So that is like a negation, a, neg a negative, right? You're answering the question O negative, right? And I shall start with the first one. When you're affirming, you're saying yes, you're accepting. Our question which we are going to use is Vuzabite Aruiru. That is the question we are going to answer. Remember, I can for me to answer a question with yes or no. The question can either read number one, ask Vuzabite Aruiru or Abite Vu Aruiru or Vuzabite aruiru. Those three questions, it's actually asking the same thing. It's the same, same thing. You will answer these questions in the same way. We are just writing them differently, but when you're answering them, it is the same. It is the same question. It's just that it's being written in three different ways. And so now we want to answer the question. Ask Vuzabite aruiru. Or abite vu aruiru or vuzabite aruiru. So when I want to answer with yes, I will say we, we, O U I is yes. We, 
The question is saying, Vuza bite. You live. Do you live? So how will I answer yes? I. Say, I go back to I because now the subject is changing. I live. In the question, it is Vuza bite. You live. Abite is agreeing with Vu. Ndiokwamana inaisha na EZ. But now when I am answering it, Instead of vu now, I use I because I cannot say yes. You do you live in Ruiru? Yes, you live. No, no, no. You've not answered it correctly. The correct way of answering it is now the subject in the answer changes to I. It changes to I, and because now the subject changes, it means even the verb, the ending of the verb, has to change. The NB you need to take is that when you're answering a question, you stick to the same verb. Do not change the verb. Do not change the verb. In our question, vuzabite aruiru, our verb is abite, to live, to live. So you live in the question, in the answer becomes, I live. I am still sticking to the same verb. I can't ask you a question in English, where are you going? Then you're telling me I'm staying at home. No, you stick. The correct way of answering a question is that you stick to the same verb. You stick to the same verb. Where are you going? I'm going or I'm not going, right? So back to our question. The question is asking, I am saying that when I am answering it, my, my subject is going to change from vu to je. So when I am answering it, can somebody tell me, how will I answer that question? Uh-huh, somebody? What will you say? Catherine? We? We, J, Abite, Arreiro. Spell for me that Abit to me say my Ebuini spelling is key. H? Mm hmm. A? Mm hmm. B? I T E. I T E. Very good. I T E. Because remember, we said last week when I look at the ending of the verb, it must agree with the subject. And we said that when you're writing a verb with j, it will end with e, right? So you say, we jabit a ruiru. We jabit a ruiru. Yes. I live in Ruiru. Now, I want to answer the same question in the negative. Now, I want to use no. No is L-O-N. No. What you need to remember here is that when you're answering in the negative, last week we talked about writing in the negative. When you want to say you're not doing something, we said you must use two words. The two words we saw you use is ne, n e, and pa, p a s. And we say that ne and pa go around the verb, or you put the verb in the middle of ne and pa. So now I am answering Eskavuzabite Aruiru. I want to answer it with no. With yes, I said we jabit aruiru. So with the no, it will become somebody. No. What will you say? No. Yes, Catherine. You say no. Mm hmm. G. Mm hmm. No. Mm hmm. Habite. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. And then I want you to look at that ne and a bit. What are you seeing when you look at those two words? N E and then a bit H A B I T E. What are you seeing? What are you seeing? Do you see there's something you need to do? Catherine, They 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 both end with any, but I don't know how to do. They are both ending with any, but look at N E, and then the next letter is C N H. Yeah, and it's supposed to be silent. I think it's a. Uh, what do you need to do? I think I need to drop. Uh, an e and add an apostrophe to n exactly so that it becomes no je nabit pa exactly we say that two vowels don't follow each other a vowel does not end one word and begin the next one so it will survive you so the rule is we drop that e n e and drop your e and then you put an apostrophe so that it becomes je nabit pa right so we are seeing there that when a question is using vu, you answer it with je. I want to take you back to when we first looked at the subject pronouns. When we first started learning about je, tu, il, el, nu. Vu and il el pluriel. And I am especially interested in that vu. There is something I said about that vu. What did I say about vu? Right at the start when we started, when we learned about the subject pronouns, there's something I said about vu. Can somebody tell me? We had two meanings of vu. What were these two meanings of vu? Hmm? Nani anakumbuka? Somebody? Shale, hope. I'm semi kitu nyinyi watu. Mulisema yinyi ni mtakuwa tu listeners. Silent listeners. What did I say about this subject vu? There were two things I said about them, about it. What did I say? Somebody, somebody speak. With the formal verb, the formal subject. Yeah. So when it is formal, how many people is it addressing? It sing, sing once. It is a singular. It is singular. And at the same time, what did we say about vu? The second meaning of vu. The second meaning. Mm. It's both singular and purulo. It is both singular and plural. Very good. It is both singular and plural. And so I'm going back to our question. 
Vous parlez le français when I answer it with je. That vous was addressing how many people? How many people was it addressing? So that I answered it with je. Nikisema je, kwani niko wangapi? One. How many? One person. One person. So when you, we say now you has two meanings. You can be speaking to one person. That is why I answer with je. So now that same question. Vous parlez le français? I'm spoke. I'm speaking to you, Nyambura. Hope. Na shale ni na ongele shani ni wote kwa class. So say I am asking you. Vous parlez le français? Do you speak French? How will you answer that question? Which subject will you use? Do you speak French? Now answer me. What would you tell me? Yes, ma. You will say, Madam. Yes. Now. You'll use? Yes, we, we. We, and what is that we in French? Which subject are we talking about? No. No, exactly. Now you're going to change the subject to no. So take a note. Vu has two meanings. So because vu has two meanings, you can have two ways of answering it if vu was talking to one person that one person would answer with je so that the answer becomes we oui, jabit aruiru now i am asking all of you do you live in ruiru you'll tell me we oui. you'll say we oui. We've agreed you change the subject to nu. So your answer becomes what? We? Catherine, ita kuita utu weo, kasabu wenjo ni kama uko na sauti, wengine walipoteza. Niongeleshe tu, we? We? It becomes what we I think you say we live in Luiru. Yes, yeah, so how will you say that in French? I want you to answer me in French. You say we nous habitons a Ruiru. Thank you very much. We Nuzabito Aruiru. So you're seeing there that when a question is using vu, I can either use je to answer it, I live in Ruiru, or if I was the question was addressing more than one person, then you would answer with we live in Ruiru. So I would have either said jab we jabit aruiru or no jona bit pa aruiru or we nuzabito aruiru or no nu nabito pa aruiru so when a question is using vu we have seen there are two ways of answering now i want to slightly change that sentence that, that our original I want to slightly change our original question. Instead of vu, now I want to use tu. I want now to use tu a bit aruiru. So that my question will become esk tu a bit aruiru. Esk tu a bit aruiru. Now, tu, the question is using tu. Which subject will you use to answer? Taking into consideration that two is you, now any mutu moja, hamuzi kwa wawili, two is referring to one person, you. So, how will you answer that question? Ask two a bit aruiru? Someone answer me. 
with we ask to a bit a ruiru how will you answer that question ask to a bit a ruiru Reponde avec oui. Use yes. How will you answer it? Catherine? You are going to say? Mm -hmm. Oui. Mm -hmm. J, J, as in I habite a little. Yes, Jabit Aruiru. Why are you going to use J? Why J? Because when you you are asking me like you live in Loiro, so I will obviously say yes, I live in Loiro. I I I I yes. So I started with those two because when you when you when you faced with a question that is using vu or it is using tu, you need to change the subject in your answer. You change the subject in your answer. For those two, you need to take a note. But for the rest, the subject will not change. Il habita ruiru, oui, il habita ruiru, or no, il n'habit pa, il habit, il habit, il habit. It will not change. The other question, uh, we can also use another illustration. I can also have a question that has the subject we. Oui. Do we live in Nakuru? I mean in Ruiru, nu zabito a Ruiru. When it is using nu, it's going again to remain the same. It will not change. We nu zabito a Ruiru. No, nu nabito pa a Ruiru. So you can see when the subject is nu, there is no change in the answer. It remains the same. When again the subject is using il, l, or somebody's name, Again, it will remain the same. Paul abit ariru. We Paul abit ariru. No, Paul nabit pa. It remains the same. So it is only these two which you need to take a note that when a question is using to and when a question is using vu, then you need to look at it again because your subject will change in the answer and so that is what i wanted to teach you guys about formation of question and answering in these questions remember we are using that ne and pa which we learned last week so that now when you're answering a question in the negative as long as there is a negative aspect you must use n n e and it goes with the pa p a s we say it, we use n and in the middle you put your verb you put your verb that is what we have used we have used what we learned last week to form questions anybody who needs a clarification any question kuna swali kuna mtu akona swali Question? I am either very good. You people have learned everything without even mumelewa kabisa kabisa. Ama labda ni mejiongelesha. Ho pata ameenda naona. Shale. Ho pumerudi. Si uonge bas. Any question? Catherine Kosawa. Yes, but I wanted to ask you something. Mm -hmm. Ask. 
from what we learned like last week, we were dealing with the first group that had with ER. Yes. Now, is this the continuation? Mm, continuation as in what? When, when dealing with the, 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 the words that, or the verbs that ends with ER, because we were supposed to have three, they were supposed to be in three groups. Yes, they are in three groups, but uh, at this level, I am just doing the group one. As we okay. progress, because what I needed you to have an idea is how you work with the other verbs. And you know, group one are usually the majority in French. So now we are we have actually combined. I am combining what we learned last week in 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 in, in what we learned in uh, conjugation of verbs in the present tense. I am combining it with what we did last semester when we looked at nouns. So that you remember last week, I told you guys to form simple sentences using different verbs, the different verbs you have learned, you know, to work, to live, to walk, to speak, those verbs that we learned that belong to the, to the group one. Eh? So those simple sentences you made, now we are using the same to form questions. And then now we are seeing how do we answer the, the questions? Okay, I understand. You understand, eh? Yeah. Okay, somebody else? Kuna mtu mwengine anataka kusema kitu before I say what I want to say. Hakuna mtu mwengine. Catherine, thank you very much for being an active participant in class because you know when you do that, at least I know. Kuna mtu anatuko pamoja, tunapelekana pamoja. Because you know, otherwise I would just be speaking to myself. And this is not a lecture. We are supposed to be having an interactive session so that when you have a question, you know, you raise it hapa. Unajua uki raise hapa, it's easier for me to answer you so that if it is not clear, I say it again and you answer. Remember uki niandikia, mimi nitaandika tu ujibu hapo. But when we speak... I think that is usually much easier to understand. And so I think I am done with what I wanted to do today. So what I will do as I share with you the notes, nilikuwa ni make up the introduction to the topic we were to do today. And so I'm going to add the notes there. And then I will also open a discussion box there so that uh, you can andik apo. Ile kitu inakusumbua. Uh, at the same time, I wanted you guys to form a simple sentence, which now we can use to form questions and answer the same. So kindly, if you could also share with me, you know, your sentence which you came up with and the three ways you have formed a question using your statement and the answers respondea la question respond to the answer and i have said responde avec oui et no you're responding using yes and then again you're responding using no to the same question so otherwise thank you very much for the silent listeners who are the majority and the active participant katerina Merci et bon semaine, bon semaine. Have a nice week ahead. Au revoir.